Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Holy shit, it's still going. Oh my god, it's <laughs> this is for the win. Oh no! Yeah. Yo. At the end of the last episode, Daniel. Yes. We showed what is about to become our new Rick House. That's right. Can we call it a Rick House? Rick House, Rack House, Barrel House. Yeah. So there's three words for places that are traditionally used or more commonly used for barrel storage. Rick House, Rack House. Yeah. Right? And Rick and Rack refer to racks of rails. Right. Traditionally barrels stored three or so high per section. Yeah. But you can have multiple floors in a Rick House, sure. each one with multiple barrels high. Okay. There's also a word used in Scotland called a dunnage. D-U-N-N-A-G-E. Okay. And a dunnage, sometimes people call their barrel house a dunnage, but a dunnage is actually specifically used to refer to a barrel storage that is essentially partially underground. Ah. Uh, right? Yeah. So what I would say is we're building a Rick house, but I would really love to someday have a dunnage on the property because it might let us age our whiskeys longer in Texas. So that only the roof is above ground, right? Right. Then we get the cooling temperature of the surrounding earth of the building, and then you just build a vent stack out the back so that you have airflow. The airflow. So you have airflow, and you're not completely buried and sealed underground. Okay. What makes a good location for barrel aging as opposed to a bad location for barrel aging? Whenever it comes to rick houses, barrel warehouses, storing barrels. What are you looking for? What makes it an ideal environment for okay, this so aging say, process to happen? Really, there's only two things. You want somewhere that has reasonable airflow mm -hmm. and it has reasonable access. You're going to be driving trucks to these things, offloading. You got to have a room. It can't be a storage facility in the middle of one of those you store it buildings. Okay. <laughs> You've got to keep in mind what's around your aging warehouse because your whiskey is going to be exhaling and inhaling. And if where it's exhaling and inhaling has a lot of fumes, and construction and chemical production in the air. Right. When you say exhaling and inhaling air, you don't mean like hour to hour, day to day. You mean, mean by year. So season to season. Season to season. Okay. So, so basically, you just don't want to have a barrel warehouse in a polluted area. Do some distilleries choose choose their warehouse locations based on environment? They're wanting to get certain kinds of notes. For example, some seaside distilleries saltiness in the air. That's more of a byproduct than a location choice. Okay. Right? It's more of like a, well, here's where we built it. Why would you build it by the sea back in the 1800s? Yeah. Why? Well, because ships. Yes. Right. Because it's the easiest to transport things on and off of docks when you're on an island with no internal transportation. Everything's going to come by sea. So you set up the easiest place to get access, right? right. Why did the, most of the Kentucky early distillers set up on the river? Ships, boats, yeah. how to get your product out, all right? Or by railroad tracks. Why did uh, Masataka Takatsuru in Japan, when he went up to Yoichi, he didn't just go into the wilderness, he actually set up by railroad lines. Oh. Uh, other than that, whether you set it up right here mm -hmm. or three miles that way, it's not gonna have a big difference on your barrel aging. Okay. Uh, it's the overall general climate. So we're out in the environment now. I'm being aged appropriately. Is that what this is called? Got the, the air flows. <laughs> Breathing. I am a whiskey You're, you're good with the words. Uh, I do contain whiskey. Yes. So I'm aging it. Not for long though. Yeah. <laughs> Just borrowing it really. Yeah, that's right. It's more on its way to other pastures. <laughs> Speaking of rivers. <laughs> <laughs> so around the world, about how many different, like legitimately, distinct regions for aging whiskey in a See, unique I don't think, environment. I don't think we've found the end of that yet. Yeah, because the region where it's being aged, the area it's being aged has a tremendous impact on the final result. Yes, so that, one of the things I was working on and have been working on for a while yeah. is trying to break up the U.S. into whiskey regions like they do in Scotland. Yeah, just And just US. wondering if it's possible. Mm. And so I started with, well, we know Texas has a pretty distinct profile because yeah. of the heat, right? right? But that could apply to Oklahoma. So it could be that our region of the flavor profile includes the Texas, Oklahoma, right? But once you get into Louisiana, you get much higher humidity and you get a whole different vibe. Oh, yeah. So now you've got Louisiana, Alabama, Arkansas, 
right? Sure. Different vibe. Right. I would say that what are the two whiskeys that I always um, think these basically came from the same distillery or the same region? Mm. It's Whiskey Del Bach and Colcagan. Right. But one's from Arizona and one is from New Mexico. Right. But they taste like I would, their neighbors. I would suspect right? Nevada may be included in that too. Yeah. So yeah. that would mean that there's a southwest region sure. of whiskey style, right? So. Uh, basically, it's as, but then you get into Canada, it's a whole new ball game. Uh, for the U.S., it can be a lot of north to south. I think in Canada, there's climate on aging and profiles that happen east to west. Yeah. At least until you hit the Yukon and then all the bets are off. Has there been a distillery that has made the same spirit unaged and then sent it to different regions to see how does this exact same spirit you and the exact same... You know that? Jared. Balconis, Balconis. Okay. just announced that they wanted to see what would happen if they sent their whiskey yeah, all yeah. over the world. So they sent one to Scotland, okay. they sent one to the Northwest, yeah. they've sent barrels in all these different places, yeah. and now they're just waiting okay. to see what happens. So they sent this exact How same whiskey, cool is that? the same barrels yes. around the world. and it's their single malt. Okay, the single malt. I think. Let's, let's go look at our 10 million square foot. <laughs> Not a gym. You know, it's, it was purpose built to be a general warehouse. <laughs> hey, you know who I think should come with us? Uh, Cody freaking hello. Nelson. You want to come? Uh, sure. All right. We're going jungle excavation. Right. We're marking off the edges of the ramp going into the barrel house. As they measure the distance and the incline, Cody, Magnificent Bastard, came all the way from Canada. It's the best whiskey you've had while you're here. That would be a toss up between the Redbreast 32. Thank you, Brad LeClaire. Absolutely. Um, High West Rendezvous, actually. Might have to find somebody to maybe mail me some olive oil. <laughs> also tube socks, because I'm like out of tube socks. Tube socks and olive oil. This is going to be a ramp. It goes all the way down to that road entrance down there. Mm -hmm. You see the blue tape? That's the corners of the new door. So that's gonna come out, and we're gonna put in a giant door. We still have a lot of stuff in here left yeah, over from the gym. The barrels don't need mirrors on the walls. Yeah, they do. They're divas. So uh, this is a bunch of merch stuff. We're getting cleared out, but this room is gonna be full of barrels? Like, what's it gonna look like once so this is So the first all... half of the room will be barrels on both sides and all the way across. So we're gonna put Rick's going this way, lengthwise. Okay. Um, either that or we put them up against the wall and allow ourselves the forklift to get in from the side. Sure. We'll decide later. Okay. But either way, we'll have Rick houses that are gonna be probably three high. Not Rick house, Rick's. Uh, Rick's and racks that are three high. And that lets us put the barrels in without the weight of the high barrels resting on the low barrels. You've seen this in all of the Kentucky distilleries that have the racks and the... Okay, so, so those are going to go on both sides. So right now, there's a few things going on. There are vents for air conditioning. Yeah, I, gonna, I, I am awesome. seeing there's no open air anything. This is all very enclosed. Yes. It's insulated. I see a dehumidifier, which doesn't sound like it's ideal. No, what are we doing to make this an ideal environment for aging whiskey? So, one, that's here because there used to be art in here. Okay. So the dehumidifier goes away. Right. Those things get turned off and we just don't turn them on anymore. Okay. So this room becomes hot in the summer and cold in the winter. Yeah. Right? Uh, then we cut ventilation holes through the ceiling with exit fans. And then we'll put wall vents on this side, probably above the garage. If this thing was full and we had a forklift that could go four barrels high, right. we could fit a hundred barrels in here. Oh. Yeah, it's a lot of whiskey. Yeah, that's why I'm not worried about this thing getting maxed out for storage. And then the middle area, we can always line up small, like the five gallon or the 15 gallon barrels, and we can add yeah, more experimental. experiments. Yeah. So, as you saw at the end of the last episode, this was the shipment of grain we got in yep. for, uh, I think it's our first whiskey quest. Yeah, that's the mag got, Malt of Magnificence. The single Malt of Magnificence. We got a few going right now. Yep. Joe! But the community voted on that grain in this room, merch storage now. We're usually sold out of merch. We do have some things back in stock. We're yeah. really shitty about selling out. We have glasses and coins. We have glasses, we have coins? We have coins. We have coins. We have coins in stock. Coins in stock, the merch thing is in the description below. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, what's the deal with the canoe? I don't know, Roy bought it and I'm not sure what it's for. It's the whiskey boat. Yeah. If we ever Ride go- a flaming river of whiskey through the woods. If this ever goes full 1792. Yeah. We got the boat. To just ride down ride the hill. Way down. <laughs> I 
Damn it, Joe. I told you. I told you. Damn it, Joe. I, I didn't. I told you. <laughs> I thought you just saw people pouring whiskey no. randomly. I was like, and you were like, hey, Rex, go get some good whiskey content. And I'm thinking, fuck you, Joe. It has to be more than like random people ordering whiskey. No, it was you said Creek. at lunch today, people from 40 Creek were what? Sitting at the table. Doing a tasting, yeah, right across from our table. Forty Creek people were uh, all right. So Forty Creek, hey, I didn't know it was you guys. Sorry. So hope, hopefully you enjoyed your whiskey tasting here in Austin. So Joe's already started on the names. Thank yeah. God, because I did not want to do the names of the Patreon magnificent bastards that are going to cover this freaking wall, yeah. cover this bar. I was about to get trained. I was about, uh, at lunch. I forgot to ask. I was going to ask you, Daniel. Can you train me how to do the laser engraved names? Because this needs to happen. Yeah. It needed to happen a long time ago. It needed to happen before the grand opening. Right, but Joe's on it. Already done. All right, he's already started. Yeah. Speaking of 1792. Yeah. I think, because this hasn't been discussed enough. Yeah, it really hasn't. In whiskey communities. We should talk about it more. Across the world. Yeah. I want to do. If only people cared. Yeah. I want to do a reenactment of 1792, because here's what's going to happen. And by that, he means the collapse of the barrel warehouse of 1792. Here's what's going to happen. Yeah. 1792, I promise you, is going to release an edition of their whiskey. Of yes. The fallen, the fallen whiskey barrel. Yes, and they're going to charge so much money, yeah. which they should, because it's an amazing story. It really is an amazing story. We may and actually. And if they don't, then their marketing team should be fired, and we should take over. Idiots. They're <laughs> morons. But let's see if there's a difference. Yeah. Let's 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 make some 1792 fall down, and see if it's worth the extra money that they will inevitably ask people to pay. Done. Okay. So. Where's my button? First things first, we need to fill. The, Emma says the barrel. barrel. Emma says this barrel's good. Oh, those boxes got wet. They're already coming apart. You know who I blame? Wait, hold on. This is even better. Emma, who do you, who do you blame? Tommy. Uh, Tommy, come on. Come on. I don't say it out loud. <laughs> okay, we've got a hydrated barrel. Hydrated barrel? It smells okay. It smells like Still smells like whiskey. You know what? You know what we need though. What? We need some actual, legitimate. 1792. You mean uh, Rex like this? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Oh yeah. So here's what's happening. 1792, the wall fell down. Yeah. And then the barrels just rolled down this hill into like some kind of river or something. No, you so don't even know what happened. This whole right. time everyone's right. been talking about it and you don't actually know what happened. Can I be honest? You haven't read a single article, Link. Can I be honest? I didn't look at any of them. <laughs> <laughs> the barrel house collapsed in on itself, half of it. And some of the barrels were destroyed and the leaking whiskey infiltrated a nearby river and killed a bunch of fish. How, then, how is that not exactly what I said? You said it rolled down into the river. The barrels did not roll into the river. The whiskey leaked into the river. And then the, like a week later or so, the other half of the barrel house fell down. Okay. The only thing I saw was helicopter footage. Yeah. And I was like 98% accurate. <laughs> this is probably because of science and according to my calculations, calculations, the most accurate uh, place to roll our barrel to get closest to exactly what happened at the 1792 warehouse. It is this right here. Yeah. <laughs> it's going down this exact grade, inch by inch. It's perfect. It's beautiful. So we'll have a perfect analog, a comparison. We're both very familiar with 1792. It's a classic whiskey. It is. Okay, so what do we see? Are you ready? Let's hope the bunghole stays in. Son of a... oh, no. What are you doing? <laughs> that wasn't nearly full far enough. Again. Wait, it bounced off some barrels. Okay. Yeah. And it headed the other direction. And it headed the other direction. It's going really fast. <laughs> now, why did you throw it so hard? Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Holy shit, it's still going. Oh my god. It's, <laughs> this is for the win. Oh no. <laughs> it almost went off. Oh, all right. In the tree. So, 
Can Candy we, channel, this is a reenactment. Can we taste it sitting down? Yeah, here. Wait, wait, wait. You're gonna have a hard time getting up there. You actually have a chair over here. What? All right, you ready? He's trying to have mirth. Yeah. I'm coming. I'm coming. I need a glass.